Well, hello. Hello, once again, this is me, Leonard Wells, broadcasting as usual from Haslingdon, north of Manchester in the UK. Today is Sunday, the 30th of January 2011, and it's quite cold out today, I can tell you. So here we are, north of Manchester, just a little bit north of Manchester, maybe 45 kilometres or 30 miles, to use the old-fashioned term. Um, that's something I'd like to mention in passing. We never do things 100% in England. We sort of fudge it, if you know what I mean. It's an English expression, meaning we don't do it properly. We sort of half do it, or three quarters do it. We decided some years ago to change to the decimal system to help the children with their um, schoolwork. And um, so we used to have feet and inches, and some people still use them. I mean, America still uses feet uh, for um, their uh, measurements. So what did we do? We changed to decimal, so now we have millimetres and centimetres and metres. But for typical British reasons, we don't have kilometres. So everywhere in Europe, as you travel, the distances are measured in kilometres. Except here, where they're measured in miles. Now, why go halfway and then stop? I mean, people from all over Europe and from uh, uh, and other parts of the world come to England and they see on these strange signposts on the motorways, MLS, meaning miles, doesn't mean anything to them. So why do we do this? Why, why half do it? Why not do the proper job? It was the same when we came to the question of joining the EU in Europe. The Second World War, following on after 20 years from the First World War, made many of these countries who had been invaded in, by one country or another determined to build a system which would guarantee peace. Because for 2,000 years the whole of Europe has been fighting each other in war after war and at least a hundred million people have been killed. So all of these countries decided when they built the EU um, that um, it, from now on it would be peace. And God willing we will have 2,000 years of peace to come to rebuild this great continent, this centre of civilization, and all that is good. Uh, and uh, noble in the world. Now, um, if you uh, think about it, at the end of the Second World War, France and Germany, uh, encouraged by others, particularly the Benelux countries, set about discussing how to solve this problem. So they decided to have the iron and steel community which would have locked in the German um, uh, steel manufacturer ma manufacturing in the Ruhr and the Rhine valleys um, with the French so that hopefully this would de deter Germany from going to war and it then went on to become the EU. Now at that conference in the 50s we had a British representative who fell about laughing and, and he left. He said this would never work, but of course it did. And not long afterwards we had to come cap in hand to want to join. And de Gaulle said no at first and we were, our, we were rejected. And in a sense de Gaulle was right because we've never really played the game. We wanted to be in because that's where the money is. That's where all the trade and business is. But we didn't want to be, to participate in the European vision, largely because we've never been 
invaded for a thousand years since the French defeated us at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. So um, we wouldn't uh, completely join the, the EU. We didn't want anything to do with the Schengen Agreement, which is now costing us a lot of money because people from uh, Asia, when they apply for a visa for the Schengen area, pay 50 pounds or whatever it is for a visa and are entitled to travel all over the EU, except to the UK, because they need an individual visa for the UK. So why, do, why would they pay £80 to come here when they can go all over Europe and see just as many castles and museums and things here as they can in Britain? Because after all, most of the capitals of Europe are just full of, effectively, museums. Now, we, we tend to look a, bit, a little bit backwards in England. We have this um, feeling that because we once ruled the world, or a great part of it, that we're somehow different. Now, we're actually quite behind the times, because if you look at the House of Commons, it looks like some kind of um, play-acting, because they're still acting the way they did in the Middle Ages. The, the House of Commons is so inefficient I mean, just look at the voting system. Why don't we have a proper parliament where we have modern, up-to-date equipment so there's a seat for everybody instead of people having to stand because the House of Commons doesn't have enough seats, you know. Um, we should have a proper House of uh, Commons uh, parliament and uh, there should be seats for everybody and the ability to vote by um, digital means text or mobile phone or whatever, the iPad, you name it. But instead of which, we have this ancient system where they all troop in and out and give their names to a teller who then gives the information to the speaker who then reads out the results. God knows what it costs us all that time. And then we occasionally, when there's an important vote in the House of Commons, we fly people from around the planet specifically to vote. If we had uh, electronic voting, we wouldn't need to do that. But of course, and uh, all kinds of things like this, we're, we're a little bit behind the times. We won't join Schengen, and we don't want anything to do with the Euro. Well, at least while it pays us, but at least we think we were better off without the Euro. But every day in, in the UK, two trillion dollars worth of currency is traded. And there are people sitting about, speculating about all kinds of currencies going up and down against each other. Now, if you call that making a, earning a living, I don't. I mean, they want to go out and get a proper job. But if we were in the euro, it would be the most powerful currency on earth, without any doubt whatsoever. Uh, and, um, all right, it has difficulties, but it guarantees and locks us into, pe into peace. It also means that you can just get on a train, if we were in Schengen and the Euro, you could just get on a train with some money in your pocket, some Euros, and go anywhere without a passport. <laughs> Instead of which we have this crazy mixed up system where we're different than the rest. It's like joining a golf, joining a golf club and saying we want to play with a triangular ball. Um, and that's how it looks. Now from England today, it's like being in a barber shop because all the government seems to do is snip, 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 cut, 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 cut. cut. Uh, and that's all you can hear. We're cutting this, we're cutting that, we're cutting this, we're cutting that. Aren't we good boys? We're cutting this and cutting that. Uh, so that's the, um, uh, the 10 minutes is up, which means that YouTube will cut me off if I don't um, uh, stop now. So I'll say cheerio. God bless while it's still legal in the UK to say God bless. Take care. All the best. See you soon. Bye.